Hi folks, this is Tanner Reed, Product Design Engineer at Autodesk, and today I'm going to be taking you through a workflow um, to kind of explore different joinery methods that we can design uh, for laser cutting. So it can be a little bit tricky sometimes, I think, if you're trying to design in 3D and then break it down into 2D for manufacturing or prototyping in this case, and then bringing it back out to 3D to assemble it and to, you know, um, to visualize it and finally to actually build it. Uh, so what we're going to do is kind of show you how that process can be done with layers of uh, cut board that we're going to be laser cutting, which gives you a little bit more freedom in your joints to, uh, for sort of aesthetic and strength purposes. So to do that, we're going to be going back, sort of a flashback to a project that I had in college. It was the first project for a class called Mechanical Prototyping, which of course was a class where you learn how to prototype things, uh, design and build them. And so for this first project, we had to create a box, didn't matter, you know, anything about it except that it had six joints, six fasteners, and, you know, you had a certain amount of wood that you could use to actually laser cut to make it. And so in the class, I sort of employed a three-layer strategy. So each of these walls for a six-sided cube uh, were made uh, with three layers of cut MDF. And the top part had sort of like a lid that popped off of it. Uh, but the goal of this is that you can actually, when you have different layers that you're stacking uh, to laser cut, you can get sort of some more dimensionality in terms of how these parts interact and assemble and fit together. So when you have these laser cut pieces, you can have things like mortise and tenon joints that are hidden and fit in beside um, uh, other parts that they're going to interact with. Or you can have these stepped dovetail joints that normally you couldn't do with a laser cutter with just one layer because obviously you, can't, uh, you can only cut in that one direction. And all of it sort of pieces together to make uh, a finished box. And so um, I'm not going to go through these. There were other things that we did, like, you know, creative things, like cutting things into the sides of the walls. I'm not going to show you any of that. You can kind of have fun and, you know, go crazy on your own there. But we're going to cover sort of the joints that we're, uh, that we're going through. And on this, we're going to be covering a sliding dado joint. So that's that lid that I was showing you a second ago, as well as a rabbit joint, a mortise and tenon joint, a butt joint, a dovetail joint, and a lap joint question mark because I know it's a little bit difficult once we sort of get going with it with the different layers and modifications. It gets a little bit tough to actually classify, you know, what kind of joint this is, but we're going to call it a lap joint because why not? And finally, a hidden snap joint. Uh, and I, I chuckle a little bit because this one I haven't actually tested, like I haven't built it, you know, in person, but like two seconds ago, I decided it might, it might be kind of a cool thing to explore a little bit just to get your juices flowing. So you'll see that happen. I can't make any guarantees with the one that I make, but, uh, you know, you should have fun with it and see what you can get to work. Um, and so all of these are sort of in these three different layers to avoid some of the limitations that you get with other joints that are more typical for laser cutting. So when you're designing for 2D, you get a lot of things like captive nut joints, which are, I think, one of the most clever designs ever. I love them. Um, but they limit you a little bit in terms of strength in certain directions, as well as um, uh, like aesthetic, you know, uh, issues that you might have. And then you have other things like, you know, these sort of sliding and locking mechanisms or stacking or some of the simpler, you know, just kind of like tongue and groove, you know, things, not tongue and groove, but just, you know, uh, teeth fitting in together. Um, but we're going to try to avoid those, those limitations by making this with these three layer thick walls. And so we're going to end up with a box like this one with a sliding lid. Uh, and again, that box, just to show you a little animation here, is going to have a sliding lid, six walls, and those six walls are all going to have three different layers that will be cut profiles. So when you glue these layers together, they're going to be able to assemble into the full box. So with that in mind, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I always do is work with parameters. So when we start building our box, I just want to give it a couple of variables to define. The first one will be the length of the box. So this is a cube we're going to make. So uh, each of them can all be L. I mean length, that's fine. And then I also want to define the thickness of the uh, material that I'm using. In this case, we can just kind of assume, you know, three millimeter thick uh, wood. But this way, since we're defining everything by these two different values, um, if we decided later to make a larger box or to use a thicker kind of wood or a thicker acrylic or whatever we're cutting, uh, we can do that really quickly and all of our, you know, there won't be any sort of design problems that come from that. It can all update from these numbers that we change. So I'll start with that guy. Um, first thing I want to do is show my origin so I can look at what I'm working with here. And I'm going to start with an offset plane uh, that's going to let me draw my first wall on. So I'm going to bring this out to length divided by two. So that's saying, you know, all the way out to the edge of the box, essentially, if we want the box to be centered around the origin. And then I'm going to create a sketch on that new plane. And if I face it, I can start with a center point rectangle. 
draw out and name it length on the vertical and length on the horizontal. Uh, whoops, didn't lock that in. And then I can say stop sketch. If I bring this out again, I can now go to create and say extrude. I can pull that into negative thickness. So what this is saying is that I want the outside wall of this box to be, um, uh, you know, length wide. And so as a result, I'm going to be stacking these layers inward uh, towards the origin. That way our thickness is going inside. So if I take this new one, I'm going to go over here to bodies and click on it. And I'm going to go into uh, create and I'm going to say pattern, rectangular pattern. And for this, I want to make sure the bodies is checked. And for my direction, I'm going to choose that uh, axis there. And if I look in, I can pull those in, make sure that there's three layers because that is what I want. Um, this one is also putting three in a different direction. I'm going to change that to, uh, to one just to make sure that those are all set uh, to not patterning over each other. And on here, I'm going to make the distance negative length times two. That's going to make sure that, oh, excuse me, <laughs> negative thickness times two. That got a little crazy. Negative thickness times two. That's going to make sure that they're all stacked um, close to each other and say okay, or at their exact thicknesses apart. And now we have our three layer wall on the outside. So what I want to do now is make the other five walls similarly. So if I take these three bodies, I can go to create, I can say pattern and circular pattern, and I can pattern all of these around that central axis. And if I make four, that's going to give me four walls to my box. So you can see them overlapping in the corners. And the reason that I want these overlapping in the corners throughout the design process is because those are where the joints are happening. Um, these are where we're going to be modifying these edges to fit together. And so it's really nice to have them all overlapping from the start so that we can just take away until they all fit. Uh, so finally, what I want to do is take these three, uh, take these three layers. And I also want to uh, copy and paste them to be on the top and the bottom. So I'm just going to say Apple C, Apple V. And I'm going to change my pivot point to be the origin. And then I'll say done. And that way I can just rotate these 90 degrees. Oops, that was wrong. Rotate the 90 degrees. And that's going to stack them flat on top there. And then finally what I can do is just a quick mirror. So if I go to create, I can say mirror. And I can take these uh, bodies that we just created, those top three, choose my mirror plane to be the bottom of the origin, and then I can say OK. And now I have a fully, uh, fully defined box with three layers on each side. And now what I want to do is make each of those uh, sets of three walls uh, into their own components. So I'm going to go over here to the global space and say new component, and I'm going to name that one front. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the back. And once I have that, I can actually go in and drag each of these walls that we've made into their respective uh, components. So these are the first three. I want to put them on the front wall. So now we have uh, each of our sides in separate components with their three independent layers. That way, as we're defining, uh, you know, each of these uh, joints, we can do them by cutting into individual groups. So to start this off, I'm going to hit Shift N. That's going to turn on component color cycling. Uh, that way we have different colors for each component. It makes it a bit easier to see each wall. And what I want to do for this top, uh, top component is adjust its three layers to shrink in the sides of the top two and to leave a little bit of a lip on the bottom layer. That way we have uh, a place that we can make a track for this to slide in and out. And if you look at this, uh, we want this to no longer interfere with each of these walls. That's sort of our, our goal for each of the operations that we do is to cut away material so that it no longer interferes with the walls. That way when we're finished, it'll all stack together. In this case, it's pretty simple. We just want all three of these thick uh, all three thicknesses of each of the walls to cut into the top layer. That way it just slides right inside of all of the other ones. So to start that, the first thing that I'm going to do actually is to rename the bodies in each of our components. So I am going to uh, just hide each of these for a moment. 
And on the front wall, I want to change the names of my bodies to outside, inside, and middle. This isn't necessary, um, but it helps you when you're navigating and cutting things away from each other, just be able to select them in the tree rather than in the browser. So I'm gonna go through now and do that for all of these. All right, so once I've got all those there, um, I'm gonna start cutting away. And so to do that, the first thing I wanna do is activate the top component. This way I'm only working uh, on those parts. So if I do that, I want to uh, hide the bottom and hide the front. That way we're only really focusing on uh, the, where the three walls that go around it are interfacing with it. So the first thing I wanna do is make this top layer uh, cut in so that it no longer intersects the three layers of each wall around it. So I'm gonna to go to Combine and Modify, and I'm gonna choose the top layer. And for my tool bodies, I'm gonna select all nine of the walls that go around it. Then I say Cut, Keep Tools, say OK. And now I have a step up, and it's no longer interfering with the three walls around it. Now I wanna do the exact same thing for the middle layer that's here. And for my tools, again, same thing. Cut, keep tools, say OK. And now if you look, I've got uh, our two top layers cut in from the side walls. And I want to now, instead of cutting in three layers thick, three layers deep, excuse me, into the inside layer of the top, I only want to cut in two layers so that I leave uh, you know, one little piece to go in and slide through a track. So to do that, I'm going to do another combine. I'm going to choose my target body to be that inside piece. And for my outside tools, I'm gonna to choose the outside and middle walls of each of these uh, uh, other components. Say cut, keep, say okay. And now as you'll see, we have the top piece with two stepped in and a little shelf around the bottom, which if you'll look at our top layer is exactly like this. So actually this component is finished now. We've got it done but its joint isn't finished. If you remember, we've got still uh, uh, three tracks to put in, or four, along the walls around it. So I'm gonna go in now and cut into each of these three walls a little slit for this to go into. So I'm gonna start with this wall. That's uh, our right wall. I'm gonna activate it. And I'm gonna do a combine, click the inner wall, and for my tool bodies, I'm gonna choose that bottom inside layer and you'll see where it's fixing to cut it out. I'll say okay. And then if I slide this around, you'll see where we've cut out a track now for it to slide into. So the next one that I'll do is the back. Uh, and actually, you know what? I'm just gonna do this real fast on the other two the same way, but it works the exact same. All right, and then once all three are there, I am going to activate the full assembly. And you can see now where we have these different tracks that are going to hold our dado joint for our top piece. Now, I also wanna make sure that this thing fits through the top or the front wall as well. So I'm just gonna hide the back left and right, and I'm gonna show the front wall, which is right here. Activate it, and what I'll do is take a combine, and for all three of these, I will cut out that uh, top piece that we have there. So I'm gonna do that two more times. Get this guy, those guys, good. And finally for that outer layer as well. And then if we activate the full thing, now you can see there's no interferences and we're gonna have that nice sliding joint coming out of the front. Now, if you wanted to get fancy, I can show all of my other components and I can ground every one of them except for the top. So if I go through here, I can ground those guys, keep them fixed in space. And if I go to assemble, I can say an as-built joint between the top piece and like that left side piece. My position can be along this edge between them. 
make it a slider joint, which it already did there automatically for me, um, and then say OK. And maybe also go into Assemble, Enable Contact Sets, and then I can make a new contact set between the back and that top piece, say OK. And now I have a functioning sliding dado joint as opposed to just a fixed one. And that is the dado joint. So the next one that we want to do is a butt joint. So if we look at our box over here, I am going to hide everything except for the front and the bottom. There we go. And a butt joint is simply where one part just hits against the other one, butts up against it. Nothing fancy, no, uh, you know, no geometry there except for hitting against it. This is obviously the easiest one to do, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to hide everything except for the front and the bottom. And all I have to do is draw in all three of those blue layers to where they hit behind uh, the inside layer of the front. Uh, this I don't actually even need the front for. Um, if you wanted to do it like we did a minute ago where we're working on um, using the combine tool and boolean operations to cut these out, you can do that in three steps, you know, one for each layer. Or what I can do is just activate the bottom, hide the front, which is here, and instead I can go in and do a press pull, and I can click on each of those three front faces, and I can move them in, so I can do negative thickness times three. And when I say OK, that's going to move them in behind the front. So if we look at the front now, you should see it butt up against it. And now we have a functioning butt joint. Pretty simple and quick. Again, you can do these a thousand ways. The Boolean operations are, are better for like more complex things, whereas really quick, simple stuff you can do with a press pull. Up next, we have the lap joint. So if we look at these, uh, this back wall here, the purple one, it has two walls coming up against it, uh, this red wall and this blue wall. Uh, and a lap joint is very similar to a butt joint, except that a portion of the wall will extend past, so it locks into it a little bit. It's like a, it's a like one step more interlocking than a butt joint. Uh, it gives you a little bit more um, uh, directionality in terms of your glue and like where things are going. With prototyping, it's it, you know in this case it's much more of an aesthetic purpose. It's just to cover up uh, the outside wall and make the back of it look like it's full, so that you lose a joint that goes between them. Um, but we're going to do that one now, pretty quick, and it happens on both the, uh, the left and the right walls. So what I'm going to do is uh, show the back and the left and the right, and hide the top, bottom, and front. And what we can do here, if we look back again, is we have um, each of these two walls step back one thickness, so we want to bring them back one thickness, and then we also want to bring in the inside two walls of the back wall to come in uh, two thicknesses. So to do that, I am going to start off by hiding the back wall, and I am going to activate the left wall, and I'll do a press pull, not on an edge. Let's do it on Oh, Phil, sorry. We'll do a press pull, there we go, on those three edges, and we're going to bring them back negative thickness. And then we're going to activate the right wall and do the exact same thing. Negative thickness. Now if we go ahead and show the back wall again, We can see now where we've come close. We just need to uh, bring that back wall in, it looks like, two layers? What did we have for this one? We had the back wall coming in all three layers. So I will, let, you know, let's do a Boolean operation, why not? We'll go to the back. I'll choose a combine. I'll choose that middle wall, and I will cut it using all three of those. And I'll do the same thing for the inside wall as well. And there we have two fully functioning lap joints. Again, pretty quick, pretty simple. One step up from the butt joint in terms of complexity. Uh, but it gives you a lot of freedom to decide 
where your edges are going to lie, if you're going to be laser cutting this, if you're going to sand it afterwards, you might have burn edges that matter. Um, so it can be a structural help, but in this case, it's much more aesthetic. So we've done the simpler uh, joints where you're just pressing, pulling, or doing bullion operations. But now I want to move to one that's a little bit more complicated that uh, requires a little bit of sketch work as well. Very simple sketch work, but a little bit of sketch work. Uh, and that is the mortise and tenon joint. So what I want is to hide uh, everything except for the right wall. And I want to show the front wall. And in between these, I want to be able to uh, have mortise and tenon joint between this right wall sliding into the front wall. So if we look back at our original box here, what I am going to do is hide uh, the back wall and the right wall, as well as the top and the bottom. And if we look at this one now, you can see we have one middle layer that has two protrusions that stick into uh, the front layer there. So if you look here, we've got two that kind of slide into it. And that gives us more of like a locking joint. And if we move this front piece away a little bit, you can see where that is. So the middle layer of our uh, left-hand wall has two protrusions, and they will slide into holes cut out of the two layers of the front wall. And if we go back to our box, I'm going to start off by cutting off uh, all three layers thick of the three layers of the right wall. I'm going to turn on our component color cycling. I'm going to activate the right wall. And I am going to hide the front. And we'll just start off with a press pull of the faces on this side. So we'll do a press pull between those. And we will go back negative thickness times three. Now the next thing that I want to do is bring out two protrusions from the front of the middle layer. So I'm going to go into my uh, bodies on my right side. I'm going to hide the outside piece and I'm going to hide the inside piece, leaving just the middle. And I am going to create a sketch on that uh, on the front surf or the inside surface of that middle piece. And I'm going to go over to line and I'm just going to really quickly rough out two rectangles. And when I make those, I'm going to go over to uh, my constraints palette over here on the right. And I'm just going to make, uh, make sure that they're the equal uh, uh, distance top and bottom, as well as an equal thickness. And what I'm going to do is draw out a couple of quick construction lines that go between each of these. And what that's going to allow me to do is first square it all up. So I'm going to say a uh, uh, horizontal vertical for this piece and this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. And then I can go in and again make these into construction lines. I think we're in a selection filter here. Do select all. Click on our construction lines. and make them construction. And then what I can do is make them equal also. That way these are evenly spaced. And what I can do now is make sure that these are the right dimensions. So for this one, I wanna make sure that it is uh, two thicknesses thick. So I'm gonna to go to two, thickness times two. And maybe for this one, we can just say, uh, uh, maybe our length uh, divided by four. That way we make sure that if we ever change the size of our box, these aren't going to go like overlap in weird ways and do stuff that we're not expecting. Uh, so once I have that, I can say stop the sketch. I can spin it around. Now I can click on an extrusion for those two there, and I can go back a distance of negative thickness with two S's. <laughs> Make sure it's on join, say OK. And now I have my, uh, uh, my two protrusions coming out there for my mortise and tenon joint. So the next thing I want to do is make sure that those two things are cut out of the front panel. 
So I'm going to go and hide the inside and outside panels of that wall, of the right wall. And then I'm going to go and show the front panel and activate it as well. So now what I can do is a simple combine operation between that inside wall and the, uh, the right wall panel that we had there. Say OK. And I can do it once again for this inside wall that's here. Make sure it's on a cut. Do the outside there and say OK. And now if I hide my right wall, you'll see that we have those two cutout pieces for our laser cut parts. And with that, we have also a corresponding right hand wall that fits pretty beautifully right in there. And if you want to look inside a little bit, you can do, um, you know, shady with hidden edges and you can kind of see where those parts line up. Another thing that you can do when you're working with these parts is uh, to do a section analysis. So I'm going to go up and activate the whole thing. And with a section analysis, I can click on one roll, drag it back, and you can see where the other two are fitting in together. Uh, and in this case, again, we have like zero tolerancing happening here, but that's because with the laser cutter, we should be fine and it'll stick together anyway. So we'll keep that. That looks good. Say cancel on that. And now we have our mortise and tenon joint finished. So I just realized uh, that we totally forgot to do one of the easier joints, the rabbit joint. Uh, so for that one, what I'm going to do is uh, go back to our original box here and show you all the different parts and we will change our colors there. And if we look at this one, I'm going to do a section analysis on the back wall so that we can see the way that each of these two side walls is interfacing with the bottom. So by simply stepping them one thickness each, uh, we end up having uh, a stepped uh, uh, rabbit joint. And through that, we end up getting an outside wall that has a, a flush piece that goes all the way down to the bottom. So for aesthetic reasons, this one's pretty simple. It also locks them in a couple of dimensions, which is pretty cool too. Uh, so to do that, what I'm going to do is switch over and I'm going to shift in once again for our component color cycling. And I am going to hide the front wall and I'm going to show the bat or the bottom, which is right here. So to make these line up, uh, what I'm going to do is start by press pulling uh, these two inner walls to be above uh, their corresponding bottom walls. So that didn't make <laughs> sounds like a bunch of garbly goop. I'm going to hide the bottom. That's what I'm going to do first. And then I'm going to show the right side. Oh, that activated the bottom, sorry. Hide the bottom. Activate the right side. And what I'll do now is press pull this inside wall to negative thickness. And then I will press pull this wall to negative thickness times two. Now what I can do is uh, deactivate the right side by activating the bottom. And I will show the bottom. And for this one, I'm just going to do a couple of combines probably. So we'll do the, the bottom there and we'll make that side piece the cut. And we'll do it again for this middle piece. And this time I want both the outside and the middle to cut it. And then finally I'll do the top piece there. And I will use all three of these to cut it away. So the next thing that I want to do is uh, make that same step pattern on the other side to match the other wall. So I'm going to go through the exact same process just to get it to match up with the other side. So that is the completed rabbit joint. Uh, the next one that I want to move on to is the dovetail joint. So if I go back to my box design here, we can see uh, the back panel uh, having sort of like upside down pyramid steps coming out of it. And correspondingly on the, bo on the bottom, we have each layer getting a little bit wider and wider towards the top. So the idea here is that, you know, with a, if you haven't used them before with a step dovetail joint is that you can slide it in in one direction and it can't come out in the other direction. So uh, keeps it really steady, very strong joint, uh, and pretty easy to do with a laser cutter. So what I'm going to do is turn back our component color cycling, and I'm going to hide our two side walls, which would be left and right, which is suddenly escape. There it is. 
uh, and I'm going to turn on the back wall. So if I go on and show our back, which is here, all right, and I want to start cutting into what that shape will be. So what I'm going to do is hide my back wall, actually. We're going to go back and hide it. And actually, no, no, we're going to show it. We're going to show the back wall. And I'm going to create a sketch. Actually, I'm going to activate the back wall. Bah, all over the place. Activate that back wall. Now we're working in the back wall. And under sketch, I'm going to say create a sketch. I'm going to put it on the back of that wall. Turn it over. Hide the bottom. And now we're working strictly on the back. So what I want to do here is draw out a couple of rectangles. So I'm going to go to sketch. I'm going to choose a two point rectangle and I'm going to draw it one, two, and three. Uh, so I actually <laughs> drew that in the wrong direction. So if I just pick this back up, I can scale it back in and we're going to be dimensioning this afterwards. So it'll make sense in a second. Uh, and then once again, I'm going to use my constraints to uh, uh, make these equal. So this one should be equal to that one, this one to that one. And I can also go in now and start dimensioning out their thicknesses. So this one should be exactly thickness thick. And it should be, this distance should be thickness. And this distance should be thickness. And the same on both of these sides as well. Thickness and thickness. All right. So now what I want is uh, three more of these. And I want to make sure that I know exactly what width this is. Uh, so to do that, I think I'm going to define it from the bottom. So I'm going to actually say instead that this uh, bottom rectangle here is going to be three times the thickness. If I want to be really robust, I would make this be, you know, like a certain percentage of the full length. That way, if we ever change the length, it's not going to wig it out or anything. Uh, but in this case, I think maybe it's just easier to make it uh, a thickness because I know that we're not going to be changing this later anyways. So we'll leave that uh, on that thickness. And now I need to draw um, three more of these similarly. So I'm going to do that real fast as well. All right. Now the last thing I want to do is give them equal spacing. So I am just going to draw a line from each of their midpoints to each other. There are multiple ways that you could do this. You can also, you know, only do two of these and then mirror them across. That's probably a lot cleaner answer. Um, uh, for me, conceptually, it's just a little bit better to do it this way. I don't know. I just what I was thinking. So put in those three, make them equal. And once they're equal, I can also make them construction lines. And then I can say stop the sketch. Now if we zoom out, look at the back section, I can take each of these profiles and I can go back negative thickness times three, say OK. And now I have my cutouts for those stepped dovetail joints. And if I deactivate the back by activating the bottom, I'm now working on the bottom pieces, make it visible there. And what I can do now is a combine and I can use uh, all three of those to cut the bottom. I can use all three of those to cut the middle. And I can use all three of those to cut the top. And now we end with uh, a very clean edge right there where other pieces are going to come in. We have our step dovetail joints between the two. So if I activate the total top, you can see there three uh, separate levels on each one coming together to make a step dovetail joint. And if I hide, just so you could get a better idea, hide the back. If you look at this, we can see a little bit better how this is actually going to print out on uh, the laser cutter. So we have a top section there that's pretty simple. It's a rectangle with three fat edges. If we hide it, you see the next layer is going to be a larger rectangle with some skinnier edges. And then finally, we have 
uh, the last piece that's going to be kind of laser cutter that has your thinnest dovetail joint steps there. So again, whenever this box is put together, those three layers are going to stack together and glue, just like these three layers are going to stack together and glue. And then once they are finished, when you assemble it, those will just slide right into place. So that is the finished uh, step dovetail joint. All right, so the last thing that I want to do now is uh, design a sort of hidden latch that can snap into place and hold two parts together. Uh, if I want to find out sort of where I want to do that, it can be a little bit tricky because when you're designing with these different layers, we've sort of started out with all of them intersecting and then moving them out so they're no longer interfering to make joints. Uh, we end up uh, having a lot to keep track of, you know, like, is this edge intersecting with this one? Did I get all of them right? Am I missing something? So one really handy thing to do is to show all of the walls, which I'm going to do right here. And if we zoom in a little bit, there's a tool under inspect called uh, interference. And with interference, I can go through and select all of the bodies in my model. Um, I'm going to click on compute and that's going to tell me if there are any things that are overlapping. I can also say include coincident faces, but the way that we've designed this, all of our faces are pretty much coincident. So that's not helpful. So we're just going to leave that unchecked. Click on compute and you'll see that it gives us nine different warnings, which makes sense because we still have one column here that we haven't addressed yet. It has three layers intersecting three layers. So we've got nine total problems. Uh, and if we look around the rest of the box, it looks like we've actually done a pretty good job of making all of the other joints come together. They should be pretty much finished. So I'm going to be working on the latch on this corner here. So I'll say, okay, that's good. All we got to do is clean this up. And if I go back to my box design, we can take a look at uh, a section analysis. So if I want something that's going to go right in here, I'll show you one that I've already made. So you get an idea of what we're going for. And this is a latch that will come in from... Uh, the right side wall and just snap over a little piece that's left over inside of uh, the front wall. So the idea here is that we can make a little latch sort of like this one um, that you might see with more two-dimensional sort of design where you've got these two parts to come together. It has a little bit of a leeway so that the, when, this, uh, when this snap slides over this protrusion here, it's going to snap up from these angles. They're going to push on it and move up and it's going to snap around the back and lock into place. Uh, so what we want to do is make a, a similar one, but we want to hide it. So we want, to, we want it to be hidden inside of a cavity inside of these three walls. And so we can do that by cutting two holes into one of the walls and cutting one large hole into the middle wall and then having this snap come in from the, uh, from the right side. So that's what we're going to do now. Again, I haven't like tested this, you know, to know if it actually works, if you laser cut it, you know, what those sizes need to be, you know, um, so I would say... If you're doing something like this, uh, do it a little bit less rash than I am doing it. You can actually think about it for a little bit and then, uh, you know, do a couple of test runs on a couple of small pieces of material before you print out your whole box and try to assemble it. Or excuse me, cut your whole box. Um, so what I'll do then is we'll start by focusing on the shape of the latch. So I am going to go into uh, this wall that's here. If I click on it, I see that that's my left wall. I'm going to activate it and I'm also going to isolate it. So if I go down and say isolate, that's going to show only it. And I want to also hide the inside and outside walls because since we want this to be sort of a hidden joint, I want to focus on the middle wall. It's going to be in between those two layers. And I'm going to start a sketch on one side of it. And again, I mean, obviously you'd want to put like three or four of these features or you might want to put on, uh, I mean, there's a whole you know range of things that you could do with this, but I'm just doing it as an example. So. I'm also going to show the front here so we can see the layers that we're working around. And what I want to do is start off by uh, projecting these three faces. That way we can design two of them. So I'm going to type in S to get my toolbox, project, and I am going to project these three profiles. Now if I hide the front, and I'll tell you what I want to do actually. Let's stop the sketch. And I am going to modify this wall a little bit before I start drawing that sketch. So I'm going to go back to before I made the sketch. And I'm going to show the outside and inside. And what I want to do right now is go ahead and, and work on that clearance problem. So if I do a press pull up here and modify and click on these three faces, I can move them back negative thickness times three and say OK. 
And now if I turn on my front, you'll find that all of our interference is gone there. And so just to make sure that that is the case, I can go to inspect one more time, say interference, bring it across, say compute, no interferences. So now those two are officially a butt joint. We can say this box is finished, but I do want to show you the latch. So I'm going to hit uh, hide the front. And again, I'm going to hide the outside and the inside. Move to the right. I'm going to skip ahead to when I had created the sketch. And I'm going to double click on the sketch to edit it. And now I can come in here and draw this latch system. So the first thing I want to do is define um, the part that the latch is going to go over. So I'm going to draw uh, a little line uh, right here. And I'm going to make it coincident. And what I also want to do is draw out a line for a uh, center line. So we're going to design one half of the latch and then just mirror it right over. So what I'll do is uh, bring this down a little bit. And now, actually I'll bring it up a little bit, something like that. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and then I'm going to draw a line coming off of... Uh, and again, this is like no precise tolerancing here. I'm just drawing this, uh, just kind of free forming it. Uh, I'm going to come out and then I'm going to give it a little bit of a lip so that it can latch over the side. And then I'm going to give it an angle. And then once I come up, I can draw another line across the top. And from there, you can play with these. You can give them different thicknesses. Again, what would really help here would be testing this uh, after you laser cut it and get some ideas of what those dimensions need to be. But this works for the entire latch now. If you can imagine this piece protruding off of this, um, you might want to bring this down just a smidge. Um, and then that way you have a rectangular piece to cut into for it to snap over. So you'll see that kind of happening in 3D in just a moment. So now what I want to do is go to sketch and say mirror. And for that, I want to click on each of the components that we've drawn here and I want to mirror it across this center line that we created and say OK. And once I've done that, I can say stop the sketch. And now what I want to do is um, have those protrusions actually extruded. But when I look at this, I might have a couple of design choices here. So we sort of uh, uh, roughly guessed you know, what these tolerances should be to go around this piece that comes in. But I did not uh, do that for this edge. I forgot to add a couple of lines there. So I'm just going to go back to the sketch. And I'm going to say L for line. And I'm just going to draw something to just slice that right off. And then I can say trim, which is T. And that's going to let me get rid of some extras that we have there. And then I can say stop the sketch. Uh, so once I've done that, now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to use the extrude tool to extrude these two profiles which you can see there, and I'm going to bring them back negative thickness. Make sure it says join and say OK. And now we have our hidden snap feature to go over and slide into the inside of the front panels. Now with the front panels, I want to come in here and let's say, where are we at? Front, front, front. There we go. And if we look at this, it's sliding into the, be the inside and the middle of the front. So I want to ignore the outside of the front, so I'm just going to hide it for a moment. And I want to design, if I, if I look at this, it needs uh, two holes in this piece. One hole here that can cover both this piece sliding in as well as its deflection as it's being pushed over that uh, center pole. And I need it for the same thing for the other side. On the inside, I need holes... Uh, for these things to set in. So we need holes for when they're deflecting and then when they finally snap into place. I'm just going to put one large cavity there. That's the easiest thing to do, I think. Um, so what I'll do is hide, actually they're already hidden. Let's just move this in and out. What I'm going to do is activate the front panel, which is here. We're going to say fit, so you can see what we're doing here. And what I want to do is draw a sketch around these intersecting pieces. So you can already see where, they inter, uh, where they're intersecting in the plane right now. So I'm going to start a sketch and I'm going to create it on uh, this body. And then what I'll do is say S, which is opening up my toolbox, and say intersect. You can also find this tool under sketch, uh, project include, and intersect. 
and that will choose a body and it will create a sketch, uh, sketch geometries of where that body intersects the plane. So then I can say, okay, that looks good. And what I want to do now is uh, create a couple of lines that are just going to um, give it some leeway. So you'll see that what I mean for there in just a second. So I'm going to give these two a dimension of, uh, let's just say thickness times two maybe. Oh, no, just thickness. And we'll do the same thing on this side. And then if we say stop the sketch, and what I'm going to do now is hide my left hand panel. And now I can do an extruded cut for these two profiles. And I can bring them in negative thickness. And that's going to cut them right through. Now the next thing that I want to do is hide the inside piece that I just drew. But I want to show the sketch that I just made because I can take those same profiles to make my entire cavity that goes back through the middle layer. So now I can say negative uh, thickness times two. That's going to cut through that piece. And if we show the inside, whoops, show the inside and the middle and hide our sketch. Now we can see that we have sort of a pocket with a bar going across the middle. So that's the piece that our latch is going to snap over. And if we show the left side piece, which is here, whoops, there we go. And let's go ahead and activate the full thing. And now we can see where that snap comes in and goes across that middle bar. So again, just to show you snapping across. Uh, and then, of course, we've still got our front outside piece that's going to hide all of that. And if we show all of our other components, we have our completed box. And I'm going to, oops, forget about those walls there. We'll show those. And just to make sure um, that everything looks good, I'm going to do a quick section analysis on this side and bring it back in and take a look at what our system actually looks like. Which if we show it here, you can see our snap coming in, snapping over the bar, everything looks good. And I think this would actually work pretty well. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know for sure, that's just kind of going on intuition, but it seems like it would work pretty well. You could maybe do like a simulation analysis of it to see how that's gonna work, if it's gonna snap off or not. With wood, you can't really do that very you know predictably, but if you're doing acrylic or something, we can see if that would work. But for this sake, I'd say we're done. I think we have our completed, what I'm calling a hidden latch joint or a hidden snap. Um, and that also completes the box. And finally, what I always like to do with the design is go back and make sure that, uh, you know, the way that I've designed it, if I made changes, that it's a robust design that can update with those changes. Uh, the first thing I want to do is just add some holes into each of these walls, kind of like our uh, original box over here has. Uh, so if I wanted to do that, a really quick, easy way to do that would be to go back into the sketch that made the original first wall, double click it, and what I can do is go into sketch and give an offset, and I can offset that a certain amount. So let's say like uh, negative four times thickness maybe, yeah, I think that's fine, negative four times thickness, say okay, and then stop the sketch. And here it should be the exact same as it was before, but if I go back and edit my original extrusion, I can actually change that profile to just the outside. And if I did this right, everything should upload the same. It does. So that's our finished box with its holes cut in it. And we might decide too that we wanted to change the size of it or change the thickness. So just to make sure that all that works out smoothly, I'm going to go in and change this from six inches to eight inches. Make sure that change is okay. Looks good. I think all of our joints updated appropriately. Looks smooth. And then maybe you want to change our three millimeter sheets to a two millimeter sheet. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, looks good. I think everything's all set. 
And that about does it for us. So uh, thanks again for watching. I know it was kind of a long video, but hopefully it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section as always. Or you can tweet me at Tanner S. Reed. We love to get any sort of feedback or questions that you have about the workflows uh, so we can help however we can. So thanks again. Have a good one.